Hey, Alex, how are you doing? Hey, good. How are you, Owen? I am good. So, how's the day been so far? No, day's been very good. Mm-hmm. A bunch of interviews getting ready to go to Japan tomorrow. Right. No, I'm very excited. Sounds good. So, uh, the Testament would be playing in Japan, and uh, I think... Yeah, Testament and uh, Metal Allegiance. Ah, that's cool. So, uh, you'll be doing double duties there. Yeah. What? Yeah, one in the morning, one in the evening. Yeah, that's really great. I, I was just... Or in the afternoon, I should say. Yeah, because, you know, while listening to the album, I was wondering, like, if, if this material is played live, how is Alex going to manage all these solos from other guitar players who have been on the album? Well, we've, we've done it. Um, yeah, we've done a few of the songs. Mm-hmm. And I just, um, I learned the basics, and I just, uh, I put my own spin on them. Right. Yeah, so <clears throat> with Gary, and especially with uh, Andreas, for example. Mm-hmm because we tend to do the songs that those guys are on. Right. I take the very recognizable parts of what they play, Mm -hmm. the melodies, and I'll play those, but I'll also play them my own way. That's cool. That's really glad to hear. So the album is already out. I mean, fans have loved it. You've got some great responses. But for you personally, as, as one of the main songwriters on this album, how happy or satisfied were you with the product? Oh, beyond. I mean, it was... Everything we hoped it would be, but more. Um, and it was nice because, you know, it was really like, in a way, it was a blank page. Mm-hmm. Because when, when you play in the, the same band for many years, you know, uh, there's a, an established sound. Right. And you try to stick to that, but you always, you want to experiment, too. You want to evolve. Right. And there's limits to how much you can evolve and actually change the sound of the band. But this was really like starting fresh mm-hmm. and even though the first couple songs written were more thrash you yeah. know maybe in the line along the lines of testament or megadeth we right. um we were able to go many other places too we were sort of explore, able to explore like 70s zeppelin and sabbath <laughs> with uh, dying song we were able to do modern euro melodic metal Right. With, uh, the song Scars with Christina from Lacuna Coil. Mm-hmm. So it just ended up being this very diverse project. And, uh, you know, and I, I love doing the Testament albums and doing the solos, but it's also nice to point to an album and say, you know, there's my tone, <laughs> there's my rhythm, there's my chords and stuff. Yeah. In fact, I was I was about to ask you that because, I mean, when we talk about Testament material and then about Middle Age, it's a different ball thing altogether. And here you've got total control on what sort of riffs you want to write, whether it's fast, you know, right. slower. So this might have given you a lot of, uh, you know, scope to basically uh, broaden your already to musical spectrum. Yeah, well, it's a lot of it's a lot of freedom, which mm-hmm. is great. Um, and I've had that with my instrumental projects. Right. So if I play with my trio or the acoustic planetary collision, mm-hmm. uh, there, you know, I, I'm deciding what gets used, what doesn't get used, and it usually, it, and it, you, the way you hear it is the way I play it, right. the way I came up with it. Um, but I've never had it with a metal project. Mm-hmm. Usually with you know with testament, it goes through the machine. Right. And Eric interprets it his way which is great it wouldn't be the same otherwise True. but this is something where you can actually really hear the riffs the way I, I came up with them and also just to you know go to some of these melodic places that right. you know, might not go otherwise so I, you know, I like to, I like doing both that's that's it's great to that's... have both both outlets absolutely and and the solos on on this album you know obviously the one which you have played are you know, easily uh, recognizable that, yes, this is Alex Skolnick on guitars, you know, ripping out this amazing solo. So, I mean, what sort of uh, approach did you try to, you know, when you were actually working on these solos? Was, was it something to basically uh, not uh, repeat something which you had done with the Testament uh, tracks? Well, the, you know, they were, most of these were so different than Testament tracks. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't worried about uh, repeating. Right. And then you can take a song like... Um, you have Dying Song, for example, mm-hmm. which is much more, you know, like Page or Hendrix. Right. You know, it's more that sound. Or, and even like, the you know, one of the thrash tunes, Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I kind of thought about what Randy Rhodes would play. Uh-huh. 
because even though the other guys, Gary and Andreas, play over the fast rhythms, my my rhythm is more mid tempo. Right. So I kind of I did some Randy Rhodes inspired parts there, but yeah, with each tune I was able to, you know, sort of take different influences and sort of you know imagine how they would approach it. Right, and that's clearly reflecting on even a track like Let Darkness Fall, where the middle section is totally different as how the song started. I mean, really great to see some acoustic vibes in there and, and, and Mike doing his best by playing, you know, many instruments, which he, you know, does in general. Yeah. That's something, you know, which would have been really cool when you guys are working on the song. Yeah, yeah. Well, that just happened naturally. It was almost like they were two different songs and we realized the parts would work well together. Mm-hmm. And then the acoustic part, um, I just I threw that down just as a, a scratch part. I was thinking I'll go over it again with electric. I didn't think in the middle of an electric tune having an acoustic, but everybody liked it. Right. And it was almost like you know, ma- master of puppets, where you don't expect this this breakdown, <laughs> right. and then it builds back up. So it was kind of inspired by that as well. Awesome, that's really great. Did you get a chance to write any lyrics, you know, for this? Uh... I did, yeah. Yeah, I wrote the lyrics to Scars uh-huh. with Mark and Christina on vocals, right. and I wrote the lyrics to um, Destination Nowhere ah, with uh, Matt from Trivium. Right, right. Wow, so... You... And on those songs, I actually sang uh, vocal demos. You did? Wow, uh-huh. that's cool. I mean, that that's something which I'm sure the, the final copy did not have. Uh-huh. Yeah, of course, of course, and it's yeah. They're definitely guide vocals. I would never hire myself as a <laughs> as a metal singer, as a metal frontman. But but you know, I can do I can do a good guide, and um, they they followed the guides pretty closely. Obviously, their voices, you know, they're so they have such specific voices. So it's gonna they're gonna bring their own sound to it. Right. But they really added a lot to it, and they were yeah. They all went off the the guides that I did. Wow, that's really cool. I mean, there's the, the instrumental, the only piece on the album which has like the barrage, amazing guitarist on board. For you, a songwriter, you know, how did you plan basically, okay, where's Misha going to play? Where's Charlie going to play? Where's... Oh, yeah. So it must well, be the, complicated. That came about because, um, well, you know, again, that's, that's a three-part tune, yeah. the instrumental. And, um, you know, I knew I wanted to play on the progressive section. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but then the, the end of it, then it made sense to bring in a bunch of guests. Uh-huh. And it was all the same part. So really anybody could play wherever they wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, but actually, Charlie was the first one to lay down his part. Okay. So I think once he did his, we sent that to the other guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Matt, or no, Phil Demel plays next, and then I think you know he sort of picked up where Charlie left off, and then uh-huh. each guy sort of heard where the other one left off. Place. So yeah, but we never we never pre-planned it; we just sort of let it happen. Okay, that's cool. So so Charlie started it, Phil took it up, and then it went maybe to Misha, or maybe Matt, or then to Brett. Right. And then to, you know, I obviously... Well, like, actually, no, that's part... I'm talking about part three only. Okay. Part, but part two, it's me, mm-hmm. then Misha. Okay. Then Ben Weinman. All right. And that we're, we're the ones on part two. Then part three comes. Then it's Charlie. Uh-huh. Then Phil. Mm-hmm. Then Matt. 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 Um, then Bumblefoot. Ah, wonderful. That's cool. And you guys did a, you know, a, a few shows, I mean, at New York uh, on the release date. So, you know, obviously uh, everybody was not available uh, to do, do the show. So how was it like, you know, playing these tracks uh, live uh, for the first time? Oh, it was terrific. I don't, it works It works out fine. You know, we find ways around it. Like uh, Christina <clears throat> was in Italy. She couldn't fly in from Italy, but uh, luckily, uh, Elisa from Arch Enemy lives in Montreal, which isn't too far away. Right. And she was on. She was available, and she said she's on the bonus track, the right. Dio song. We rock. So yeah, so we did that, and she also filled in for Christina. Mm-hmm. Um, Mark Asagueda, you know, he's a very diverse singer. Absolutely. Beyond Death Angel. Right. And um, he, 
actually sang the Phil and Selmo tune and did a great job. Cool. And, um, and, you know, Chuck was there. He was able to sing his tune. Yeah. And um, I think, you know, with each show, we just sort of make, make it work depending on who's who's available. Awesome. That's really great. Alex, you must have written a lot of songs. So is there something left out which possibly you guys might uh, plan to write a second album down the road? Um, yeah, we, we, we have a few parts mm-hmm. already laying around that we could start for new songs, but no complete songs. I think everything that became a complete song was, <clears throat> was used on the record. Okay. Right. So possibly this could be, I mean, this, this could have been more or less like an Alex Connick metal solo album kind of a thing. That's what it felt like in a way, even though it's obviously I'm doing the heavy lifting with the help of you know, what we call the core four, which is right. uh, Ellison, Portnoy, and Mengi. Mm-hmm. Um, but it did it did feel like that, just because there was such a big role in terms of, you know, mapping it out, uh, playing all the, the rhythm tracks, all the harmonies, mm-hmm. uh, working with the vocalist, doing production. So it had the feel of doing one of my solo records, but it would have involved all these other people, and it was great. And it was the first time I got to... Yeah, do that, but exploring different styles of metal. Uh, absolutely, that's really cool to hear. And yeah. since you got yeah, so te- and Testament's great, it's a machine and yeah. it works great. Yeah. I wouldn't change a thing about it, but this is a different, you know, it's a different thing, and you get to hear a different side of me, which is cool. Absolutely, it's really glad that you know fans got to hear uh, your different side. Obviously, with the Alex Kolnick trio, you've been doing a lot of you know uh, music with that, but this, the metal side of Alex, yeah. is something which. Probably fans might not have expected, but it just came out and then. Thank you. That's true. That's true. well, yeah. When people hear me outside of Testament, it's it's been jazz or uh, world music. Right. Uh, yeah, we're working with people like Stu Ham, mm-hmm. you know, or Michael Manring, very, very kind of progressive stuff. But you know, yes, there's a lot more. For the longest time, I thought you know, all for metal, I can just do Testament. That's a good representation of metal. But yeah. This came along, and it really is an opportunity to do all these different uh, types of types of metal. True, sounds really great, Alex. Now, what about Testament? I mean, you guys have been writing material from like years and years, and we know we first got to know that the album would be out in 2015, and then yeah, you know, so yeah, what... I mean, that's usually the case. I mean, I think at this point, there's no need to do a, a record every year like we used to. Yeah, yeah, the records they come out when they come out. And when they're ready. And uh, at this point, you know, we're looking at the first half of next year. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, they, we've started on some material and it, sound, it sounds good. It sounds good so far. It's just, um, you know, it, it, it works at its own pace. Right. So possibly, like you said, uh, the first half of 2015? That's I've, 2016. Yeah, 2016, that's, sorry. That's what it's looking like, yeah. Wow. So, you know, but in the meantime, we've been very active with shows. We're about to play in Japan. We just mm-hmm. played uh, the Riot Fest in right. Denver and Heavy Montreal. All these really great shows, and we did a whole five weeks in Europe. Did right. a whole some festivals. Played with Metallica for the first time. Mm-hmm. Uh, did a whole tour with Exodus in the U.S. Right. So, uh, you know, we even though there hasn't been a new album, it's it, we've been very active. So, I, and actually, I think we need for the uh, live shows to die down a bit to make the record happen. That's usually how, how the band works. Absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. And I read somewhere, and I probably, while having a chat with Chuck last year, that, that you guys are possibly looking forward to have more like a death metal vocals, which was introduced by Chuck in the, in the late 90s album. Yeah, I think we'll do that. You know, he doesn't like to do it all the time. Mm-hmm. And I don't blame him, but I, I mean, he, and there that does show up at, in some of the, you know, some of the recent records, right? Yeah, you know, like uh, Formation of Damnation, right? Yeah, you know, that has a part in the middle where there's definitely death metal. Yeah. But then the, the rest of it, he sings, you know, in his classic style. And, right. Uh, I like I like it. I'd like it for certain parts. Mm-hmm. I'm not as much of a fan of uh, the songs where they he did that for the whole. Um, tune. I think he feels the same, but I think yeah, we'll put it to use, but it'll be used yeah. uh, as a tool. Right, right. Sounds good. So if you had to put the new material into your discography, which album would be the possible closest one in terms of sound? Um, 
I'd say probably you know the recent one. Yeah, because Dark Dark Roots of Earth was the first one with Gene, right? On drums, mm-hmm. and I think you know he's definitely had he has more of an imprint now because we've sure. we've done all the touring since then with him. Yeah. So I and I think that's going to definitely affect the uh, the the outcome of the writing. Awesome, that's really great to hear. Now, Alex, you came to India. We had a chat, we had a chat last time, and you roamed around the streets of Bangalore with with my friends, and you had a great. Oh yeah, great guys and, and girls. Yeah, it was a great group of folks. Um, right, right. So can't wait to come back. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether there is any plan of obviously with Middle Allegiance, it might take some time for you guys to come here, but with Testament, something planned for next year uh, to come back? Nothing definite, but you know. We're still in the beginnings of planning. Okay. So I could see it happening. Cool. I hope so. Yeah. Because Chuck did promise us that you guys are going to be back. So I hope. Uh, oh, I'm sure we will. And I, I'm sure Metal Allegiance will too. We yeah, just, that's it. Because we get an invitation. Thanks, Alex. You have a wonderful day ahead and have a great gig uh, you know, in Japan and uh, possibly okay. get to see you guys down the road here in India. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take care. Right over. Bye-bye. I'll talk to you then. Bye.